the designers at a company called Stately Paving and Construction in Victoria have developed a really neat way of doing their landscape planning. They insert into their base plan, which has been generated from a mud map with dimensions taken on the site, they go to the blocks folder, they add from another file, a file they call native species, and they open it, they select model space, and they bring in all the blocks, the nested blocks within this block, as one unit. So we'll say add, insert into this drawing, and we'll OK it. So you can see the blocks are anchored, and in they go. At this point, they'll select it and explode the group. Now it's an easy matter to start laying the landscape design out. I will go to this layer and turn off their construction layer because what that enables them to do is if they need to turn off the advanced symbols and just have a circle. But I'll pick the first symbol and you notice down here in the species tag that's been already specified as eucalyptus caesia the common name is there and the code is already there. So this is a little subset that they work with when they're doing some native planting. So their, their approach is they just pick the symbol, bring it here, maybe right click and copy it and put three, it's a very nice small eucalypt and that goes into the corner there they'll leave the term eucalyptus caesia there and they'll rub that out later because at this stage it's only a matter of clicking on the symbol and you can see the code that's been assigned. So Acacia cognata cascades down a bank so they might move that here and put it in like so. Again copy. So I'll just go ahead developing the landscape design using the symbols that are already here. This one, when I click on it, is my well, botanical name varies. That's because we've got two selected, so I unselect all, click on it again, and that's the native hibiscus, a relatively bushy species. So I'll pop that one up there because it's needed, or screen or screening is needed in this zone. And we'll finish there. So I'm putting in more species. This one here is a Kunzia baxteri. Provides a nice, can provide nice screening for native birds. So let's pop it in here and again copy it. But we'll copy it. Um, we'll turn off warning for the moment. And copy, multiple copy. Bang, 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 and bang. And we'll finish there. We've got a unselect all again. This symbol is for a, a ground cover banks here so an ideal spot for that might be here and let's again do a copy and copy it along through that zone so we've got a, um, a massed planting of that. We've got a feature species here, a xantheria, so let's move it from that point there and we'll put it up there. It's rather a nice structural element so I'm going to copy it and make some massed planting of it in that zone and what have we left here with Brachycone multifida which is a really nice small cup leaf daisy a ground cover species so we'll pop that in there and again copy it bringing it down into that area and then through there and finish I might take some of these kunzias and copy those from there. Whoops, I've got two selected. Copy that from there to there and there and there and there. And we're now ready to I'll erase the text here. Don't need that anymore. And we're now ready to generate the plant schedule. So it's GCAD plus plant schedule, draw the standard schedule. I'm asked for a height, 150 units in the corner point and there, and there's the standard schedule being drawn. Uh, 
I'm not all that happy with the um, the text that's being used there so I'll change my text style and I'll make it set arc style as the current style and I'll generate that schedule again I'll pop it well out of the way whoops repeat it 150 for the height and afford to come a little narrower than that one so when we zoom in here that to me is a much nicer looking schedule so we have our schedule and we have our landscape plan finished and the schedule is a single block so we can move it away from the actual design now it's just a matter of creating an A3 or an A2 sheet to present this design this landscape group usually uses an A3 sheet so let's format a new layout we'll pick an A3 sheet in landscape view and OK there. Let's move to the layout. We'll take grid off and what I'll do is double click there. What I want is the design itself to be magnified as much as possible and we'll then display that on the sheet and I'll look to see if on that sheet now we can find a space for the plant schedule. I think I could put it in this area here of the, the dwelling. So let's see if we can manage that. We'll make the floating viewport a little larger, like so, and unselect all. And I'll then create a new viewport and I'll sit it in this zone through here. I do that quite deliberately so that when I double click in here I can be quite confident that I'll put our box here around the plant schedule and we'll display it on the layout. We can I think move the text twilling up so let's do that and move that up out of the way unselect all and go back to our layout that gives us now space to move this schedule up we could make that schedule a little larger but I won't fiddle at the moment the next step is to bring in their logo so that's done by blocks and add from another file and here's their title block so we can again insert it into the drawing I'll OK it and there's their title block gone in that title block could be exploded and information can be um, added quite easily I'll take the line weight off at the moment because I think we've got enough definition in the plant species that has been used the final step would be to select the floating viewports and change their colour to 255 white so they will now disappear. You might like to make that plant schedule a little larger, larger, but um, we have enough, I think, there. Maybe we should do that. We can select that floating viewport, even though it's invisible in that way, increase its size, double click to go in. Whoops, we've got the wrong one there. Display on the layout there. We need to be very careful. We select both floating viewports and hold the shift key down to deselect that one and now if we get in here we can adjust that floating viewport view and display that on the layer whoops need to be out out here and we're done so now the plant schedule is a little larger so we're ready to print the design. One final step though is to export our schedule in comma separated view so that we can import it into the plant database and get a printout of all the photographs and information about the species used in the design. So let's just do that. It's quite straightforward. We're going to extract the plant schedule 
as a comma separated file. So we'll call this, just call it extract for the moment, extract. And that's done. So we can now print our drawing. And that's a very simple matter. We can print from layout. You could rename the layout by going into the layouts manager and it's not a bad idea to be fairly specific and I'd call this A3 landscape plan and we're done. So it sits as a tab in there and we could have other tabs as well. So I'm really relatively happy with that. If we select that outer border you can see it's it has no fixed scale, but its view scale is 53. So we could pick, we could take that as a scale of 50, and then we could say, yes, it's going to have a fixed scale. What we've not done is incorporate into the design a title block. And I think we should do that before we print. I'll add the scale by going to library, details, and scroll down to scale bars and we'll go for say a five meter scale bar and we'll open it up and again insert that into the drawing and we can pop it down in that point there just searching for a suitable spot let's have a look at how that sits and it's not showing of course because we're outside there we have a spot for it I think sitting in here let's now go back to there it's again a little too large here um, I'd be inclined to take the word entrance away from there so let me unselect all take enter away and then move our scale bar from there to have it sit like so and return to the landscape view there it sits very nicely. So we're now ready to print that. So it's file and print and I'll use the bull zip printer. I will take the opportunity to change the paper size to A3 and make sure that it's landscape and then I can simply print by printing the paper. So we've actually done a 1 to 50 view but we haven't bothered to say that. We could say that in the title block uh, where it currently says 100 the scale of 100 at A2 so that needs to be edited and then away we go to print it to a PDF file and here's the print printed to PDF now viewed in Adobe Acrobat uh, Reader so I'm very happy with that as a result we'd like to generate a PDF file for the client showing photos of the species that we've used so to do that, we'll go Tools and Plant Database. We'll open up our sample one, and then we'll go File and Import a CSV. And we put that, I, re I ran that again, and I put it in the Downloads folder, and I called it Export Schedule. So I'll open it up, and I'm asked, would I like to clear all the tags? And I'll say yes. And so in goes the... Uh, What's happening is that the import looks for matching codes in the plant database and then puts a red line around it. So um, Acacia Cognata, you may remember, was used in the design. So it's now been tagged and we can say print all tagged entries. And there'll be a number of them here. And do we want to print with the image name and image URL? Well, no, we don't. And let's print to that same bullzip printer. We might want to change the properties of the printer. Um, and we'll go to say, save some paper. We'll put it on an A5 sheet and we'll OK it and OK again. And we should generate a PDF file. We'll call it plant record and pop it on the desktop. Up it comes and I think we need to minimize to reduce the so we've got the acacia and as we scroll down through the list you can see we've got all of these species that are used in the design including a photograph to go with them so the client will find that a very useful document.